everybody, welcome to AP Stats. I'm Mr. Hayes, I'm walking you through all this. Um, I wanted to start off with an activity that isn't necessarily directly related to anything in AP, just related to stats in general, about how important they can be in your lives. The notes that we have here, right here, the first unit that we're doing, which is going to cover chapter one and chapter two of the practice of statistics. Um, you can find it either in the link below, or if you're in my class, you can find the link out in the classroom or our uh, module page. And instead of going through and reading all of this, I think I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and show you the video instead. And let's see where it goes. Joy Milne first noted something odd about her husband sent when he was 45. Shortly afterwards, he was diagnosed with Parkinson's. Now universities are testing if it's a coincidence or a newfound precaution. Here's Mike McCarthy from our British partner, Sky News. When she was a teenager, Joy Milne started to realize that she had an acute sense of smell. But it was only when she noticed a change in her husband Les's odor that the incredible potential of her super sense became clear. He was an aesthetist. He was in a close situation in theatres and he was working long hours. And I presumed, and it, the, the Parkinson's tiredness had kicked in then, but we didn't know that. Um, and because he was so tired, I, I just thought, well, you're not showering enough. And I said so. At first, Joy didn't know what the smell was until she recognised it in other people and said so at a meeting to discuss Parkinson's. And I thought, this is it. This is the right moment. And I stood up and said, um, why are we not using the smell of Parkinson's? I can smell it in this room all around me. Now at Manchester University, researchers supported by the charity Parkinson's UK are harnessing Joy's special skill. Once Joy's incredible ability had been recognised, she was given by the university a number of T-shirts. Now, half of them had been worn by Parkinson's sufferers, the other half by a control group. She got them all right, apart from one. All right, so that's where we're going to end. Now, make sure I'm back on the right page. Oops. Okay, you see how the sausage is going. Not sure why they didn't work. Anyway, um, and so that's what we're going to talk about. So, a couple of things. Why would it be important to know that someone could smell Parkinson's? Take a second, give it some thought. If you have the notes printed out and you want to jot them down, go ahead. I'll give you what our usual answers are. Um, so feel free to hit pause if you want to figure it out. And unpause when you want it. So obviously there is, you know, you could start, you get early research. You could figure out what's happening earlier in the disease. You could also, you know, you've got that early detection piece. Um, Joy actually ended up smelling it, as if you read up here, six years before he, um, her husband was diagnosed with the disease. Okay? Imagine what could have been done in those six years to help maybe alleviate some of those medications that could have been started, all of that. And for those of you guys who don't know what Parkinson's is, um, it's a... It's a motor disease. Um, Michael J. Fox has it. There's a couple other people. Um, Muhammad Ali ended up developing it, if I remember correctly. And it's just they can't stop moving. Um, and then the other thing, too, is that, I mean, all of this could lead to a cause. And so if we know what causes it, then maybe we have an even better way of treating it before he kills himself. Okay? Um, now, here's the thing. They gave her 12 T-shirts. How many out of those 12 would you expect Joy to be able to smell that would convince you that she, or that she couldn't really smell what was going on? That's right, I was getting ahead of myself. So if she couldn't smell Parkinson's, how many out of the 12 t-shirts would you figure she could get? Now, at this point, what I would actually end up doing, actually we're going to do that next anyway. Um, so if you only had two choices, most people would probably end up saying something along the lines of six, since Joy had... 50-50 chance of guessing correctly. Now, one thing we'd have to do in AP Stats is to give this context. Guessing correctly. Guessing what correctly? Um, guessing correctly if a person
Now, how many correct decisions do you think it would take Joy to have for you, her to convince you that she could actually smell it? Should be 12? 11 be good enough? 10? Okay. Um, usually, at this point, I usually get people who say a lot. Okay, great. Quantify a lot. And the numbers that I usually will see, some people will say 10, a lot of people will say 11. And a lot of people say, nope, I need to have all of them right. Okay? So, let's go back a second. Actually, here. Okay, so now what will end up happening is this. Um, although researchers want to believe Joy, there was a chance she may not really be able to tell Parkinson's by smell. So that's why they set up the experiment. We're going to give you 12 shirts. Six of them will be worn by Parkinson's patients, six of them will not. And at this point, I actually end up in the class, I'd give you um, some cards. And on the cards, there'd be a t-shirt on one side. And then you would mix them all up, and then you would sit there and you would say, okay, is this one, Park you would say, is this Parkinson's or not? You'd say, hmm, that's Parkinson's. Check it, right or wrong. That one's Parkinson's, hmm, right or wrong. And you'd go through and you split them all up, okay? So what I want to do, and so you would end up going through here, and so you would say, okay, tally of correct identifications. Correct identifications means that you said Parkinson's when it was a Parkinson's shirt, not Parkinson's when it was not a Parkinson's shirt. So then, you know, you might have one, two, three, four, five, maybe a seven. Okay, so that would be seven, and then the proportion would be seven out of 12. And then I would have everybody go up here, and they would place a dot on the board. So I would make a dot at seven, Somebody may make that at eight. Somebody else gets five, and they'll go through and do that. Okay, now I need to get one thing set up. Okay, so now let's use some technology. We're going to see what happens when we get a 50-50 proposition. So if Joy was just make guessing, how lucky could she have gotten, right? So here, I've got it set up. So six, if we'd figure six out of six, right? So down here, our hypothesized proportion is 50%. We want to add 12 samples. So that'd be the example of you going through and running through a set of cards and just guessing. And um, so we want to go through and figure that out. So click the click there. So let's say we've got 28 people in class. So we go right there. We perform the simulation. So down here would be what a sample of 28 would be. A lot of six, a lot of seven, a lot of eight, a lot of nine. Lot of, okay, great. So Joy's 11 isn't down there yet. Now let's say I have you guys each perform it three times. Okay, so we'll do this. Add one more round of 28 and then one more 28 round. So even now, notice we have this giant amount of sixes. Five, seven. In fact, how many times would we have to run this? And I, now, I've done this, and I've had people get 11s and 12s and 0s and 1s. But to give you an idea of how rare that actually happens, if we continue out, look, there's our first 11, second 11. we got a 1 now, 168 samples now. But we still haven't got a 0 or 12. Okay. So I'm going to reset this quick. Let's just go back to, let's see you guys do three again. Okay. In fact, I'm going to Okay, I just wanted to get, oh, I'm just going to copy it over, but they have no place to paste it. So we get this huge setup. So if we go back to where we were, So we get this big, we've got one here at two, four here at three, a bunch at four, we're at five. This one we didn't have as many at six, and that's okay, still more than four, so you get the idea. And some here. Eight, more seven. Couple 
eight. Nine, some at ten. We get what, two at eleven? One at eleven. Five at nine, four at eleven, four at ten, one at eleven. All right. So now here's the thing. At the actual experiment, Joy identified twelve of the shirts correctly. Eleven out of the twelve shirts correctly. So based on our very small scale study here, we had what, eighty-four samples. What are the what's the proportion that we have here? So we have one out of 84. That's if the 28 of you guys went through and did this like three times each. So is this enough to convince you that she can smell Parkinson's? I mean, that's under, it's like one point something percent. Okay? And again, the way we came up with this is that we're seeing how many of these dots are, let me change colors for emphasis. So we come over here. Anything over there would be 11 or 12. So she guessed. So this is just by pure guessing. We have one setup that occurred out of all 84 of these. Is that good enough for you? Well, here. Let's see how what actually happened. Back it up a notch. supported by the charity Parkinson's UK are harnessing Joy's special skill. Once Joy's incredible ability had been recognized, she was given by the university a number of t-shirts. Now half of them had been worn by Parkinson's sufferers, the other half by a control group. She got them all right apart from one. That person went on to develop Parkinson's. So what about that? She was ahead of the curve. So not only did she get 11 out of 12 right, she actually got 12 out of 12 right. So for in our case here, the chances of our getting 12 out of 12 right would have been zero out of the 84%. Just luck, and this is all by chance. This is purely by chance. This is the odds of seeing what we're seeing. And that's why statistics is important. Because you may hear 11 out of 12, ah, it could happen. Not really. So, anyway, come back tomorrow. We'll see you soon.